The MVP ladder this season is a funny case. I think a lot of people root too deep in the MVP, but this year could be a historical season with Nikola Jokic being the, in my eyes, clear Thank front runner to win the award, the most deserving. When he's on the floor this year, the Nuggets have a plus 13, plus minus. And when he's off the floor, we've seen the last three years, Michael Malone runs these all bench lineups. Nuggets were one of the worst teams without him. And at I the same time, all, I think they're also 24 and 0 when he has a triple double. Dating back to last he's season, shooting 70% true shooting, 40% which, from three, bro. For context, 60 from the field. 70% true shooting leads the NBA while taking 15 shots a game. Typically, you see a lob offensive rebounding center like Mitchell Robinson win that, not an MVP candidate. Nevertheless, this year's MVP ladder remains starting off with you. Do you have one cooked up for us? Your top three or four by any chance? If not, if I put you on the spot, uh, I have I'll a top. I have a top, I have a top five. I think I have a top five player cut in mind right now. I got Jokic at the top. Um, I got Giannis at two, Embiid at three, Jason Tatum at four, and then the five is a little bit of a toss up between like Luca, um, Luca and the rest. But I have those guys as Jokic number one. You know, averaging a triple double, clear cut, probably best offensive player in the league right now. Um, and number one seed in your conference. Then you got uh, Giannis, again, number one seed in his conference, 15-game winning streak, really carrying that roster because they've been injured all season. He's just been putting his head down. Even though his his jump, his, the improvements we saw in his jump shot kind of just disappeared this year. Like, he really can't hit a shot outside of, like, 15, 16 feet. But it doesn't matter when um he, he is who he is. And his ability to score and pass out the post has just gotten better and better. So I... If there's anybody close to Jokic that would give it to, it'd be Giannis. And then Embiid, I think he's the first center to average 30 since, what, Moses? Like 30. Like, I mean, Jack even didn't average the, 30? Huh? Let's Jack, know, 20, 29.8. Ah, oh, wow. Come on. <laughs> it was hey, I, 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 I don't care. If, yeah, not, I if you don't get that big 3-0, I don't care. <laughs> you got to get the 3 I don't care. Nice. It looks nice. So at some point, you got to make a cutoff. And you got to have rules to this. I feel so uh, first center to average 30 for a while. I People overrate the defense. People is like, oh, yeah, Embiid is a two-way. He's a pretty good rim protector. But every other defensive problem you see with Jokic, you have an Embiid. Slow feet, can't guard guards. Yeah. Pick and roll defense, he's a drop center the whole time. I, and then Jason Tatum, it's Jason Tatum for me early in the season, he'd be the front runner. But it's the fact that when you look at him, you look at the numbers against teams under 500, 32 points per game. Over 500, 27 points per game, and the efficiency drops off a cliff. He doesn't play well against other elite. He does, he play, let, let me not say play well, because 27 points per game is still great. He doesn't play as, he doesn't play up to the standard of an MVP against top teams. So, as the season went on, he just fell a little bit more, even though his team was can still consistently winning. Because you have, you know, your co-star is also averaging 27. So I can't really go um say too he's much. He's by far him. the best and supporting cast of the field. Oh, easily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you have Luca that, you know, overwhelming numbers, but you know, teams is not too great. And a large part of the reason why his team is not great is because of defense, and he is part of that defensive issue. So yeah. after that, after that, um, I don't know, Ja. <laughs> I think the top four is kind of. I don't care after, after the, the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. really care after the, after that. It becomes but, um, it becomes irrelevant after those points. Um, but yeah, Yo- Jokic got Jokic got it for me. Um, and the only guy close is Embiid. I mean, yeah. um, uh, um, Giannis. Giannis. Yeah, I think it, it's interesting you bring up Giannis. Uh, I think the 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 narrative surrounding the MVP debate is once again. Embiid versus Jokic, but I think Giannis does have a very good case. I mean, uh, them and the Celtics are literally fighting for the number one seed like every other game. Uh, They're only a half game up. Yeah, you know, uh, and and Giannis is averaging. I think he's averaging the most points per per game for his entire career, and he's you know he's putting up the same numbers that Giannis usually. Isn't it the first time he's there. averaging thirty, or did he average thirty last year? I think it's it might be the first time. Last year is twenty nine point nine, Romain. <laughs> That's so uh, crazy. No three zero. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so if if we, let let's just let let's play a fun let's play the fun game that the narrative is Embiid versus Jokic, right? Because that's the fun little topic that's going around. For me, it's always been what, obviously we know Embiid deals with the injuries, and if, if you bring that into the discussion, it's clear Jokic is the better player because Jokic 
plays basically every single game. Uh, but if if we want to leave the injuries out of it and just look at them as the players, for me, it's always come down to what do you value more, playmaking or defense? No, because from your that, center specifically. Two- First set, first center, first set for these two players. Yes, for the for center, um, and for me, it's always been I marvel at the fact. It's not that I value playmaking more because I'm a big defensive guy. I'm a big Kawhi Leonard guy, uh, but it's just I marvel over the fact of how great Jokic is at playmaking and passing. His and vision also, and these defenses are rated to a degree. Yes, to a degree, but I, I just I, I marvel over the fact of how great Jokic is at the at playmaking his passing vision is just it's is next i mean people have compared his his basketball iq to that of lebron james who we know has got one of the greatest basketball iqs in nba history uh so Jokic, for me i've always had Jokic ahead of of of, of Embiid. but one thing that that's interesting i don't know about the matchups previous mm-hmm. to this one but I'm looking at the last one that these guys have played head to head against each other. And it was January, uh, mid January, I think. And it was in Philadelphia. Now, Nikola Jokic put up eight for 12, uh, eight, eight boards, nine assists, two blocks, seven turnovers, minus one, and a uh, uh, for plus minus and 24 points. One of his worst games. Embiid, on the other hand, 18 40. to 31. Uh, 18 boards, five assists, three steals, two blocks, six turnovers, plus 14 in the plus minus and 47 points. And the, the Sixers won 126 to 119. That's head-to-head matchup. I don't know how much that weighs into your guys' opinions yeah. on MVP, the head-to-heads. Uh, I, I feel like Embiid has kind of had Jokic's number when they play head-to-head, if I'm not mistaken. Not last to, year. Not last year. Not um. Last year. But I, I not just consistently now. I think no, MB's always been the type of guy to just take those matchups because you remember when he played AD earlier this year, he went off again too. Like whenever he's playing another talented big, he goes the extra mile to try to prove yeah. something. Takes it up. But it just they're tied up. It's five, one game out of eighty. Five, it's five, one five. game out of eighty-two. It's one game out of eighty-two, bro. It, it is. It is. That, that's why I was saying it, it's. It depends on how much stock you put into the head-to-head matchups for these MVPs and how. Brendan, what's your MVP ladder. I'm curious to hear because this turned into a Jokic segment, which is kind of funny, reasonably so. But I want to get your spin. I mean, it's kind of very similar. It's Jokic, and then Embiid, and then Giannis are kind of interchangeable, and then Jason Tatum and Luca. I think that that is like kind of the clear cut five that you mm-hmm. would have them in there. Um, you can mix a rap match like three, four, and five, but yeah, yeah, I think it's it's Jokic. I mean, it, it's. This, this, this MVP race is kind of not as interesting because I think we all understand what's going to happen. Jokic is going to. I mean, it was interesting before. earlier in the year when yes, Jason was. Tatum was doing what he was doing. And Steph was but Steph as, was balling out of his mind. You just thought if KD, Warriors could KD start didn't winning. Get yet. Yep. Yeah, it was a lot more interesting earlier in the year when everybody was healthy and everybody was balling out. But as the season goes on, one guy's been able to stay healthy the entire year. One guy's been able to keep his team as the the best team in the conference or one of the best teams in the conference the entire season. One guy's having a triple-double right now. One guy's literally setting records for efficiency. It's just, there's it's literally every single arrow is pointing to one person. People are just mad that he's winning his third in a row. But you like, know I what? Under- I think Giannis has a very underrated case. The Bucks have won 16 straight games. They're the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Oh, they're still on the winning streak? Yeah. They have oh, not that's, lost that's- in a long time the last loss they had actually yeah i know i think they went on un- yeah, yeah they went undefeated in february never mind it was january 21st over a month ago and that's a lot of time in the NBA. so Giannis has missed chris middleton for 45 games this year mm-hmm. and drew holiday has only played in 51 so he has a pretty good case 